Hello and welcome to another episode of Brew Time with me, Vincent Hung. On this channel, we talk about all things personal and financial well-being. So in today's episode, what I want to talk about is what should I invest in, stocks or property? Now, to give you a bit of background, I do own stocks and I do own a property. So I do feel like I know a little bit about investing in both to be able to give my side of which I actually prefer to invest in and what I should do next in terms of my investment and my portfolio. And in this episode, I want to share with you what I found good and bad about both. I'm also going to share with you what my portfolio looks like in terms of property and stock investments. And at the end of the video, I'm going to reveal what I'm going to invest in next. But before we get started, please hit the like and subscribe button as that will massively help my investments. No, that's a lie, but when no one watches my videos, it'll just make me feel better. So without further ado, let's get to my portfolio. So as you can see here, the majority of my money is in my property. Now that's not a bad thing because property is seen as a safe investment. It's bricks and mortar at the end of the day. I've always been told by my parents to invest in bricks and mortar. I've got 14.5% in stocks and only a small percent in crypto because to be honest, that's just a gamble for me. So let's get started and talk about property. Well, I think the first positive about property is it'll never go down to zero. No matter what happens, how bad the market is, you will always have a property that you can either live in or you can rent out. Now this would depend on what type of property you have and what area it's in. I've got a one bedroom property in London and that tends to go quite quickly. The next positive about a property is capital gains. So on the screen now is the historical house price trend. And as you can see, it's consistently been going up. Another positive point about investing in property is you can leverage. This is in the form of a mortgage, which is borrowing money based on the value of your property. So what this means is you can put in less money for an asset that's worth a lot more. So on the flip side, what are the negatives? Well, you can leverage, but at the end of the day, you're still buying a house or a home or an apartment, and the initial investment is a lot. So for instance, if I'm buying a 250,000 pound house, I need a 20% deposit, let's say, that's still 50,000 pounds. That's still quite a large sum of money to save up. The next negative is the cost of buying and selling. So if you wanna buy a property and you're not a first time buyer, or you want to buy a second property, you need to pay stamp duty. Another cost of selling is solicitor fees and any other surveys you might want to carry out before you buy the property. And it's not only costs when you buy the property, but there's costs when you sell. So when I tried to sell my one bedroom apartment, I realized actually the agent takes a chunk of that money. So I think it was 8,000 that the agent was gonna take. So I need to pay when I buy it and I need to pay when I sell it. And it's not a small amount of money. So another fee might be management costs. When you rent out a property, you can choose to have it managed where an agent might take care of any problems with the tenant, collecting rent, etc., which leaves you free to enjoy life. Another cost of having a rental property is maintenance costs. So for instance, let's say you've had your property for 10 years, your bathroom might be looking a bit tired or you might need a new coat of paint or a new kitchen. This all adds up and a new kitchen and a new bathroom is not cheap. So the last negative I think is liquidity. So during the pandemic, I tried to sell my one bedroom apartment and during that time, everyone was moving out of the city. So in that time, I found it quite difficult to sell my apartment. So there is one more negative, and this is a gift from the government, and that is taxes, taxes, and taxes. So when you make rental income from your property, you need to pay income tax. Tax can be paid on your personal income, or you can actually set up a limited company to pay taxes through a corporation. But I'll save that for another video. You also need to pay capital gains tax if you make a profit on selling the property, or if you decide to pass it on to your children, you'll need to pay inheritance tax. Either way, tax is unavoidable and this is super frustrating. But with these pros and cons, I do still think that property is a good investment and I'm glad that I've got a, a property to rent. Now, the next form of investment that I have is stocks and shares. So what are the positives that I found of stocks and shares? Well, the first investment I made was only £100 and in Morrison's and I lost money on that. But what I learned from that is you really can start with very small amounts. The next advantage is tax breaks. So I invest through a stocks and shares ISA, which means that each year I can put in 20,000 pounds and any capital gains and any dividends that I receive from the stocks, I don't pay any tax on those. 
So another advantage of stocks and shares is I can click to buy and sell relatively easy compared to property. Whereas with property, I need to wait for a buyer, go through a solicitor and an agent. I just need to sign up to a stocks and shares account or go through a trading platform to be able to buy and sell shares. And the cost of that is much smaller than if you're buying and selling property. Another advantage is that there's no maintenance. So once you've bought a stock or a share, you can just leave it in your account and it goes up and down and you collect dividends without you having to do a thing. Then when you come to sell it, all you need to do is click a button and you can sell again. Another advantage is when you buy a stock or a share, you're actually buying into a business and what you hope that business will do is eventually grow. So for instance, if you invested into Google or Tesla when it was very small and it's grown to the size it is today, that's what you're hoping your stock will do. So this is what you call a growth stock, so something that has high growth potential. So let's move on to the disadvantages of stocks and shares. So the first disadvantage is you could actually lose everything. So for instance, if you buy a business and tomorrow it went bust and have to liquidate, you could potentially lose everything that you put in. Another disadvantage is it's harder to understand. So trying to understand how Google makes money, where all the Rolls Royce revenue streams come from, that can take quite a long time and you need to go through there hundreds of pages of financial documents. However, for a property, it's relatively simple. Okay, you might need to do some, some surveys, but you have a solicitor to help and everyone understands property. You can walk into somewhere and feel comfortable and want to live there. Then you know it's a good property. Another negative, and I think this is probably the biggest negative for me, is that it's emotionally draining. So what I mean by that is, if your stock goes down, like it is currently because of the war in Ukraine, it is very emotionally draining when you suddenly see your stock go down 10% in one day. You just need to hold your bottle and don't sell because when you sell, that's when you materialize your losses. Another disadvantage with stocks is there is no leverage. So with a property, you can borrow a mortgage against the value of that property to buy it. However, with stocks and shares, for you and I, if we buy through an investment ISA, there is no chance of leveraging. There are certain assets or ways of buying that you can leverage, like spread betting, but that's not something I do. I much rather buy the actual stock. It's worth noting that I'm talking about individual stocks, whereas you can actually invest in funds where you give your money to a fund manager, they then pull up all your money and invest it for you. Or you can invest in an ETF, which is a fund that follows an index like the FTSE 100 or the S&P 500. A bit like how ducklings would follow a mother duck. So then comes to my next asset class and that's cash. So I believe everyone should have an emergency cash reserve. Um, I must admit I did go into my emergency cash reserve over Christmas, but I'm building that up now. So that cash reserve, um, why do you want it? Well, it's because it's a liquid asset. It's something that you can spend. For instance, if your boiler breaks, you need to replace that, you have an emergency fund. Now the negative of holding cash is explained in the video, which I'm gonna link either on one of these sides. But basically, because of inflation, if you keep a hundred pound in the bank, next year, because of inflation, that spending power of that 100 pounds is actually less. And the next asset in my portfolio is cryptocurrency. Now, this is a pure speculation buy for me, but I do start to see how this can be useful, but I also can see how this could not be useful because if there's regulation banning it, no one can use it. But with a lot more things going online, I do see how cryptocurrency can be used day to day. However, this is still a very speculative buy and hence why it only represents a very small portion of my portfolio. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I'm gonna share which I'm actually going to buy next. And to tell you what I'm gonna buy next, I need to show you what I'm currently holding. So this is what I currently hold. And for my liking, I think actually I've got quite a bit of money in property. So 80% of what I own is in property. So to answer your question, what I want to do is actually increase my stock portfolio. What I want to do is I want to buy more stock so that that represents about 30% or 33% here of my portfolio. I feel that matches my risk reward appetite because I am a risk averse person, so I do want more of my money in the property. But however, I think having only 14.5% in stocks, I don't feel like I'm exposing myself enough. So to conclude, I will be buying more stocks from now on, 
And in my next video, I'm actually gonna calculate how I came about that and over 10 years, which actually makes me more money, property or stocks. So thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. That really helps grow the channel.